Hello everyone. Um, another Sunday stroll from Lucy. And this time I am in, I'm at rather, Willen Lake. That's actually the North Lake. We have two lakes at Willen in Milton Keynes. And um, I thought I'd bring you here because it's just quite an interesting place, really. You know, it's not what you'd imagine if you if you know anything about Milton Keynes. Uh, those of you who are um, not in England, um, Milton Keynes is a what's called a new city. Well, it actually sprung up in the 60s, I think. Um, and it's very sort of industrial and concretey and it's famed for its roundabouts on the roads and of course nobody ever really thinks about green spaces but we're very lucky we've actually got quite a lot of green spaces and we've got about 14 lakes I think um, and Willen is a really nice area um, we've got a peace pagoda here which I'm going to walk nearer to soon but it's um a Buddhist peace pagoda and it's very beautiful in the um well summer and winter I quite often come here first thing in the morning and watch the sunrise it's uh, a few miles walk from my house but um always really worth it because there's nobody else ever there um and then I love this tree here that sort of sits in the middle of sort of a bowl really you know, it's like it's been dug out of the ground because all of this is man-made and it's surrounded by trees um, and benches, lovely benches you can sit on and just sit and be. But yeah, this one tree in the middle of this um, bowl of grass and then this maze. So this is a uh, one of these sort of swirly sort of maze things. I don't even know what this would be called. Um, but li like a little, um, what's the word? <laughs> My words are failing me today. Um, like a set of pathways, really, um, which surround the bottom of this bowl. And then the, the beautiful tree is in the middle. So just walking across. I don't know what the tree is. I'm really not very good at, I think I've said this in the last Sunday stroll, not very good at knowing what trees actually are. Um, hmm. No, I don't think I could tell you what it is. There's some beautiful um, roses that have been strewn around the bottom of it, actually. Um, I know different groups use this area um, as a spiritual sort of place. So it could be that that was part of a maybe a spiritual ceremony or something. And um, I know there's Buddhists who come here um, and, and people who have no particular faith like me. I mean, I'm quite drawn to Buddhism, um, but I'm very much a uh, an Irish Catholic girl who no longer believes. Um, I guess now for me, belief is all around nature for me. So I don't have a, I don't have a God and it's, uh, I find it quite hard to, um, some of the things within, um, mindful self-compassion, like words like, um, suffering or, or blessing or things like that, being blessed with, um, compassion or whatever. I find those quite difficult because those words are quite triggering for me around religion and faith. Um, so I completely respect that other people um, have strong faith and I, in many ways I'm very envious of that. Um, but for me, my, my faith is in nature and the wonder of nature and also in the power of compassion, which for me sort of supersedes any religion or faith um, because it cuts through all of the, those otherings and those differences between humans. 
So, um, yeah, it's quite a difficult time for me at the moment. I'm sure I'm not going to be the only one going through difficult times right now. Uh, I'm grieving. Um, I'm grieving the very sudden loss of my dear cousin, who was a really beautiful soul. Um, very troubled in the last few weeks of his life with mental ill health. Not something that he'd particularly s suffered from or that people knew that he had suffered from, although I'd seen it um, as somebody who has a lived experience of depression, I had definitely seen it. Um, so, yeah, grief is a funny old thing, isn't it? Really, really tricky to navigate. And even though I've grieved before, uh, several times, sadly, in what I think is quite a short life so far. <laughs> I'm turning 50 next month. Um, I think I've had my fair share of grief, but uh, this feels very different for me. Um, yeah, so there's lots of practical things, isn't there, with grief? You know, all that stuff you sort of get on with doing, helping the family to do. And I've had a, a week of intense stuff like that, phone calls and emails and the circumstances of his death were um, quite contentious. So uh, dealing with a lot of that uh, and the emotional toil that that takes, really, it's amazing, isn't it, how it shows up in your body and the just intense exhaustion, tiredness that I know I felt and I know his mum and his partner have been feeling as well. Um, and so coming out here into a wide open space, um, particularly when all I've been doing is using my thinking mind, um, is really, really helpful. Um, and just reminds me of uh, a little bit of perspective on the situation, I suppose. Um, and, uh, and a bit of strength too. I draw quite a lot of strength from nature, you know, from looking at the trees and knowing that they've been there for um, decades. Some of these trees are actually old trees, like really old trees, but many of them were planted uh, when Milton Keynes was first designed back in the sort of mid 60s. Um, and you know, they've seen those trees have seen so much, haven't they? So I find that quite comforting that uh, the trees have seen so much in their lifetime and they're still standing. Um, so I draw a lot of parallel and a lot of fortitude from that. I'm just going to walk towards the Buddhist temple because um, luckily there's people are walking away from it so I'm hoping I might even have it to myself for just a few minutes one of my favorite things is to I've got my flask of coffee with me is to sit underneath the temple and just drink my coffee and look out at the lake it's really quite a magnificent building oh and there's some beautiful flowers and um, let's just see what we've got here oh this is lovely our life on earth is limited, but let us leave something beautiful for the people who come after us. Then we shall adorn the human world, even after our death. Wow. That couldn't be more timely for me to see that. Yeah, that's really lovely. Some beautiful flowers here as well. Yeah, that's really lovely. And isn't it strange that when when you're going through, when I'm going through a tough time, things sort of seem to just happen without any, they just unfold, you know, without any sort of design. And yet we try and design our lives so much, don't we? I do, anyway. Um, my mother would call it uh, 
me being a control freak and wanting everything to be perfect. Um, I would call it being organised. Um, <laughs> one of my key strengths, character strengths, but uh, yes, yeah, sometimes I guess it's uh, it can be something that is a is not a good thing. So here we are at the temple. Um, so the beautiful lions, very majestic and strong, aren't they? It reminds me of compassionate warrior. That's a warrior, eh? How fantastic is that? Um, and of course there's two flanking the stairs here, the steps. Beautiful. And, uh, and there we are, there's the temple. Yeah, I think quite special so much of our um, mindful self-compassion, um, loving-kindness meditations and yeah, metta, all of this um, originates, doesn't it, from um, many of the Buddhist teachings. Uh, and as I say, whilst I'm not faith-based, um, I'm much more about humanity uh, rather than a particular faith. find it uh, supportive. Okay, well, I'm just about at 12 minutes, folks, which feels like quite a long Sunday stroll. It feels like a very kind thing that I've given myself today. The opportunity to walk, move my body, to reflect to experience the amazing good fortune I have to have life today and to have freedom. Much love to you all.